Hi everyone, welcome back to my training series entitled Understanding EMV. This is the 18th video in the series and in this video we will be looking at uh, the EMV transaction uh, st step 6. Okay, so let's let, let's get into it. Let's let's see what we've covered to date. So we know we've got Bob waiting at the comic book store, uh, you know, ready to complete his purchase. The teller has rung up the purchase. We have inserted the the chip card into a chip capable device, which means the technology selection was was EMV. Uh, we then selected one of the virtual cards on Bob's physical card. Uh, let's say that we we chose the credit virtual application. So so that was that was powered up, and and we now know that all future communication would happen between the, this this virtual credit card and and the terminal. Right. Uh, there was an exchange of data between the virtual card and the terminal. Uh, the terminal underwent a process of offline data authentication or CAM, uh, in which you know it, it, it performs certain processes in order to validate whether the card is genuine or not. We then went into a phase where we checked uh, the conditions during this transaction to make sure that they're valid. You know things like expiry date and effective date, uh, you know whether it's a domestic transaction or international, and, and the, what is being used for, you know, is it a purchase, is it a cash withdrawal, etc. Right. Uh, we are now into step six, uh, which is the subject matter of this video. Uh, and I think just this important thing just to recap is that uh, to date as we've as we've progressed through uh, through these steps three, four, five, uh, and, and six to come, just remember that during this process, the terminal is making notes or making a record in something called TVR. Uh, you know, way it, it it sort of keeps it keeps track of what's happening from its terminal's perspective. Okay, so let's get into step six now, which is cardholder verification. Right, so we know we verify that the well. We went through the process to verify that the card is genuine, and we went through, you know, we we checked a certain of the we checked some of the parameters in the card just to ensure that the transaction is valid as per the product rules of both the card and the terminal. Right. We are now at a point where we are investigating the card holder, the human being, right, uh, to ensure that the person actually processing the transaction is is the authorized card holder. Right. In this case. Uh, the cards issued to Bob, is it really Bob who is attempting to use the card? So there are many ways, you know, to validate a card holder. So during the transaction, the terminal has to identify, you know, which CVM types are supported by both the card and terminal, and to use these in the order of priority of the card. All right, so if it sort of doesn't make sense, don't worry, it will. Uh, so let's, let's, you know, uh, take a, a short trip down memory lane. Uh, you guys will remember that during the acquirer section, you know, when you spoke about the, about some of the parameters that are stored on the terminal on an EMV cable terminal, uh, there, there was a, a tag called terminal capabilities nine F thirty three, right? This tag of this terminal capabilities tag. You know, buy buy two of these deals with the supported CVM types. So, so what CVM types does this terminal support, right? And so this is what buy two looks like. So you'll see, you know, you've got things like, uh, you know, plain text pin for ICC verification set to yes, uh, inciphered pin for online verification set to yes, signature set to yes, inciphered pin for offline set to yes, no CVM. And the others are RFE. Now, obviously, you know, as an example, let's just say that that the terminal didn't did not support plain text pin for ICC verification. In which case, it would be set to zero, which would which would indicate a no. Okay, let's take 
let's let's extend this trip into down memory line a little bit further let's go back to the emv issuing section that we covered in the earlier videos uh, you guys surely will remember uh, a a tag uh, tag 8e which is the cvm cvm list okay and we personalize it on the card and you guys should remember as well that in the early example you know we actually sort of used this as a sample uh, which is you know which is our cvm list so let's let's just use it let's assume that this the cvm list lives on bob's card right so if we break this down we know that you know you know half of the of the zeros in, in front uh are mount x and the other half are mount y uh, which means basically this card is is set up to not have any specific cvm rules uh, based on transactional value right you know, as as we covered in 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 the previous videos then we have our cvm entry one which is 4201 and if you just take this forward, so CV Magic 2 is 4403, CV Magic 3 is 4103, CV Magic 4 is 4203, you know, day after one year, three, one F03, right? So one, two, three, four, five, six. This this card supports six different CVM types. So if we break that down now further, so 4201 means firstly, uh, and, and, and we did sort of cover this in the earlier video, which is a recap. It means so you know, under the CVM code, apply the next CVM method if the CVM cannot be used. The CVM type is enciphered online PIN, and the CVM condition is if transaction is unattended cash. Okay, 4403 means you know apply the next CVM method if the CVM cannot be used. The CVM type is enciphered offline PIN. Okay, which means verified by the by the chip. Right, uh, uh, and the CVM condition is if the terminal supports the CVM. Next one also says if we cannot use the CVM in the transaction, you know, then move on to the next CVM method in the list. The next one that will follow. Right, the CVM type is plain text offline PIN, so a PIN that the the, the card itself will validate, uh, and the conditions of usage of this CVM type is if the terminal supports the CVM. Right, I'm, let's just go to the rest, and you know, eventually you've got signature, and then you've got something called no CVM. Right. So, you, here's here's how it works. Right. So, the 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 there's a there's a CVM check that needs to happen between the terminal and the card. So remember, we said on the terminal we had terminal capabilities, specifically by two relates to the CVM method supported by the terminal. Right. Uh, and on the card, we've got a CVM list, which we've decoded, and, and this is the CVM list broken down into a table. So the basic process is this, okay? Remember we said we will choose the CVM based on the order of priority of the card. So the, so the card is important. Remember, order 66 card is queen. So we sort of accommodate the card uh, or the card's preferences throughout the transaction. So. Priority one on the card talks about enciphered online PIN. So enciphered online PINs means the, the user would enter a PIN. Uh, this PIN would be encrypted and it would be sent online and it would be validated by an online issuer host somewhere, right? So let's have a look. Enciphered online PIN, does the terminal support this? Yes, right? Because you can see it's set to one there. Let's look at the condition now. If transaction is unattended cash. So in our example, where we've got Bob making a purchase at the comic book store, uh, we know that what, he's not he's not there at an unattended terminal withdrawing cash, right? He's he's at a till where we have a teller, so so the transaction is attended and he's not withdrawing cash, he's actually purchasing goods. So this transaction that we're in does not meet the CVM condition. No, it, which means we therefore cannot use CVM entry one for this transaction. Okay, so what does it mean? If we cannot be used, then we apply the next one. So it means we skip one and we cascade to the second one, which is CVM type two or CVM entry two rather. Okay, so reject move on. Right, enciphered offline PIN. 
right? So interpretive operator pins means the user captures the pin on the terminal, the terminal encrypts the pin and passes it to the card. The card will verify that the pin is correct and then respond to the terminal and say, I've checked the pin, the pin is good, right? So let's have a look if the terminal supports this. It does. Terminal does support inciphered pin for offline verification, right? Now, if, if the example, if the terminal did not support it, then we would immediately reject this one because it's not mutually supported and then we'd cascade down to the next one until we found one that's mutually supported. Okay. But in our example, fairly straightforward, uh, inseparate offline pin supported by the card, inseparate offline pin supported by the terminal. Okay. Now let's have a look at the condition and see if this condition is valid for this transaction. So is the CVM condition met? And the condition just simply says if the terminal supports the CVM. So we've already established that, right? We've, we've, we've already established that the terminal does support it. There's no other condition. There's nothing related to geographical use, whether it, the transaction is cash or, or attended or unattended, anything like that. So this means that, you know, is the CVM condition met? Yes, it is, all right? Uh, so so we can now use CVM entry, the, the second CVM entry, so CVM entry 4403 in, 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 in the transaction that we're following in our example, right? So, for this transaction, we are going to select CVM type 4403, okay, which is often in cipher pin validated by ICC. So, in our example, the terminal will request that the card holder capture the pin, right? The terminal encrypts the pin and then it passes it to the card. The card validates the pin and then it, it acknowledges it sends a response back to the terminal saying, I checked the pin and, and yes, the pin that was entered matches the pin that I've got stored. So I'm happy the, you know, the, the, the pin was successful. If it was not successful, right, uh, then the card will, will let the terminal know and then the terminal will ask the user to re-enter the pin. And it, it'll continue doing this until the pin trial limit is exceeded, right? in which case the offline pin will be blocked, right? So, if successful, so let's assume that, uh, you know, uh, Bob has put in his correct pin, which is 1234, uh, the terminal encrypts it, it sends it to the card, the card validates it and says, yeah, cool, uh, this matches the stored pin of 1234, uh, it responds to the terminal, tells, and tells the terminal, okay, Mr. Terminal, uh, I checked the pin, the pin is good, uh, you know, proceed with your, with, your, with the transaction. Uh, so, when the terminal builds the ISO 8583 message, right? It will include the CVM type and something called CVM result, which we have spoken about before, right? Uh, in the ISO 8583 message that will be sent upstream. Okay, and, and so the results may be explained as follows. A value of zero, zero means unknown. For example, signature. So at this point in time, you know, it, it's not known because the customer will only sign after the transaction is has, has returned back from the issue house. Zero one failed, for example, where the offline pin, you know, where the customer got it wrong, and successful, you know, where the customer got the pin right. Okay. So in our example, our message will have four four zero three zero two in you know in in the chip data sent upstream. So just, just to recap, so if the CVM type that, that has been chosen could not be verified immediately. So let's assume it wasn't we didn't choose offline pin, right? we chose online pin or signature, okay? Then we couldn't have had a 440302 because at this point in time, we don't know, for example, if the online pin is correct. The issuer host will, will, will verify it later, right? So in that case, when we construct the message, we will then have put a 440300 because at this point in time in the transaction, we don't know what the outcome is gonna be. Right, so you would have seen if uh, you know. So, for example, if, if it was an online pin, it, it would have been four two zero three zero zero. Online pin still to be verified by the whole system. You know, if you had chosen signature as the CVM entry, so one e zero three zero zero, which means the signature to be verified after transactions completed by tenant. Okay, so so we generally only really see the O two successful for 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 offline pin or, or CVM types. 
Okay, so what the conversation between the terminal and card looks like, uh, you know, terminal sends a read record, the card responds, and in its response, you'll see tag 8 e is there, and, and in there we've got a whole string of data, right? Uh, and if you break it down, you know, if you if you if if, if you analyze this, you, you know, like I said, depending on what tool set you're using, most of the tools will actually give you a data analysis function that will break this this hex string down into into you know English. Uh, and and yeah, so basically, you tag at you can see it, it's plain text per and signature in Cypher per no CVM etc. Okay, you now with, with the code and, and the conditions included. Uh, you know, also as part of this, the, the ICC will also respond you know, with things like the pin try counter value, so the length here is 01 and the value is 2. Right? So let's assume that the pin, climate, the pin try limit is 3, we, we, have, we haven't breached it yet. Okay. I've just included this, uh, you know, let's assume that, that during the transaction we had used plain text pin. Uh, the problem with plain text pin is that if you have a specialized tool like this, you can actually see see the, the, the pin data. So basically I can tell you that the pin in this case for the card, the actual pin is 4315. And the reason for that is this is a plain text pin, right? Uh, which means the terminal doesn't encrypt the pin before it passes it down to the terminal. Sorry, the terminal doesn't encrypt the pin before it passes it down to the card for verification. So if you've got a specialized tool set, you know, that where you intercept the message be between the terminal and card, you can actually see things that are in the clear, like like this where the pin is 4315. You know, obviously, I mean, in the production market, it's not so simple because the, the teller would be aware of, you know, you sticking some sort of a bulky device uh, into the into the terminal in front of the card, right? Which is actually what needs to happen. This this reader needs to intercept the message between the card and the terminal. But so it's it's a sort of practical, uh, you know, for for frauds to wanting to wanting to do it out 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 in production. Uh, but but yeah, in the test environment, sure we can see it. But what you find is that is that, is that the card schemes are also uh, clamping down or. Or doing away with plain text pin uh, and, and moving towards the more secure encrypted pin. Right. So anyway, I, I just added this because I, I found it interesting, and I thought maybe you guys would find it interesting too, um, uh, being able to see the pin that users captured on 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 a device, on, on a terminal. Okay. So as w as we've been repeating throughout this training. The results of step six of CVM gets recorded by the terminal once again in TVR, right? In this case, by three, but it's eight to three. Okay. So this brings us to the end of step six of the EMV transaction. Okay. In our next video, we are going to be covering terminal risk management. Okay. And yeah, so thank you, thank you for, for spending this time with me, and I look forward to catching you guys in, in, in the next video. Uh, take care everyone, cheers and bye-bye.